indie game studio, they're so much more creative than what some of us do. Hi, I'm Purnima Sitaraman. I'm currently the lead designer of GSN Games. You just had a session, right? Yes. Can you tell me more about it? Uh, so we uh, had a session on women in games. Uh, so we were talking about the uh, how they got into the industry and uh, what were the problems that they faced and what was their support system like and uh, what is it the measures that we should be taking to make sure that the next gen of women are involved more into gaming and how we can improve that, how we can mentor them, how we can take away all these biases that is there. Uh, so that was the panel discussion about. So did you get a lot of questions? Did, did you enjoy it, basically? Uh, yes, so what we tried to do, uh, I, I was a moderator for the panel, and I wanted to make it more like a discussion, a very open discussion, and not as a panel versus a Q&A, uh, and which turned out to be great, because we had a lot of audience uh, chipping in and offering uh, their uh, you know experiences and their ways of changing things. Uh, so it was a very informative session, and uh, because it was an open forum, uh, the interaction went very well, uh, and uh, I think it was a very lively experience, and I hope they feel the same too. So, we have a lot of indie game developers in the field nowadays. What advice would you give them in terms of what not to do? Uh, what not to do? I think uh, the good part about today's indie developers are they already have way more information than I had back in the days, right? So, uh, right now, the uh, thing is that nothing should restrict them. Everything is out in the open. There are a lot of uh, uh, available experiences and success stories that they can follow and the actually the indie development is very supportive the community is very supportive and uh, which lacks in more of the corporate side of gaming in India but the indie development studio is a very close-knit studio they are ready to help uh, so I don't think they need much of advice from us what we are here like we have learned in our skill set per se all of us are experienced and they can always reach out to us in case they are in need of a help or some kind of a suggestion, we are there to help them out. And uh, in fact, we're looking up to them because uh, the indie game studio, they're so much more creative than what some of us do. And uh, it's really nice to see them come up with these great ideas, with these great games. And we're just happy to see them. So the advice would be not to restrict themselves with anything. And if they feel stuck, if they feel something is not going their way, they can reach out to people like us and not necessarily just women even men from the industry, and we will be there to help them and support them. Like you said, there wasn't a lot when you started out, yes. basically. How did you get past that on the basis that there wasn't a lot of gaming scope in India at that time, especially in the whole stereotype of women gamers and all of that? How did you get past it? I think it was more the passion that I had for the gaming industry which kept me going. And uh, I must say there were a few good people who... Uh, kept encouraging me and kept uh, telling me and acknowledging my, what I'm contributing, right? So that becomes very crucial. I think that a kind of appreciation and acknowledgement that you get from people keeps you going. And most of all, it's your passion that drives you. I had made sure that irrespective of any biases, there were people who were trying to, you know, to put me down and everything. But that did not deter me. I kept like, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Uh, go by that motto and uh, I wanted to make sure I was going to be in the gaming industry and I'm going to make a name for myself. I have to do this. So that kept me going and still is. So this entire game conference basically this year is following on the basis of VR. What do you think about it? Do you think it has a future in gaming or do you think it's about to fizzle out and die? Uh, I think I have mixed opinions on that. It's a great tech. Uh, the only problem that we face is that uh, it's a very expensive tech and uh, not everyone has access to it. Uh, the tech is beautiful and we can create a whole lot of environment with it. And in fact, some of the good things that we can possibly do that I've seen in some of the videos are like, you know, older uh, men and women who can't experience a roller coaster can actually put on this VR headset and, you know, get that whole adrenaline rush. And that's beautiful. I mean, you can cater it to different people, not just to professional gamers and, you know, hardcore gamers. It's, you can cater it in a whole different way. So it's here to stay, uh, but now or it will come back in a few years is something I'm still having a very mixed opinion about because such an expensive tech is not something everyone would want to buy. Because of that, your target audience becomes lesser and then revenue generation and all that. So you never know. So I'm hopeful, but I'm not completely sure. So on a parting note, what advice would you give the young kids 
all over this conference nowadays. What advice would you give them when they're trying to get into this industry and their parents, most Indian parents as you know, are against it. So what advice would you give them? So one thing is like, uh, we, so one thing we also covered is that if some of the parents are having a problem, we would like to connect with them and tell them why there is a career in this industry. And most of us have been here for like 11, 15 years, some of us are there. And that means the career is there, there is a growth, there are people are here to stay. Uh, so that's one thing we would like to interact with the parents, create more awareness. Uh, it took a lot of time for our parents to understand what we are doing. So I don't blame it on them, there is not enough awareness. So that's one thing uh, that I would like to say. Thank you.